Hello guys, hope you are all well. In my previous video, I promised a general overview on making music on iOS, but I have to take a slight detour in this one, as something interesting has just came out from Audio Modern that really shows how creative you can be on your mobile device these days, sitting in the bath, on the train or in your studio. I think it's more and more important that these applications catch up with the quality and tools of the desktop ones and I really like this company Audio Modern because they create fantastic apps that can spice up your creative workflow. Filter Step and Refer are my favorite plugins from them and to be honest I have always been into live tools that help me manipulate things on the fly like sequencers, loopers etc. It's also important to look good in my opinion because if we are paying for these apps and these developers get their well-deserved money, I think these applications should be appealing as well. Not just a bunch of shapes and knobs and stuff like that on, on screen, because uh, we are buying expensive devices to get rid of the thing, you know, when you just bend down in front of your computer and make music and, you know, it's too much headache. We moved to mobile platforms because it's fun, it's easier, and you know, it's a different approach that maybe spice up your creative workflow. For working with loops, my go-to plugin is Egoist from Sugarbytes, which is a fantastic loop mangling tool for mobile and desktop. You can load up samples, chop them up, rearrange the slices, and do all sorts of things with them add drums and bass, and even sequence effects on selected tracks. Now, Audio Modern has a different approach. The layout, the idea, and the setting of individual tracks like Density can be familiar from Break Tweaker that lets you create loops and glitchy rhythmic elements a la BT, a very popular EDM and trance mastermind who helped designing it, in case you don't know him. When I saw the news, I knew I have to get loop mix for my iPad straight away because many synths and FX plugins come out these days but I always had a thing for unique remix tools. Loopmix is a very interesting take on this. You can load up to six loops, turn slices on and off, rearrange them, reverse them, pitch them up and down, and put them on different keys of your keyboard to play back live. Seems like the guys at Audio Modern did their homework, combining their expertise in happy accident machines with fresh ideas, and ideas from other applications that work really well, and managed to come up with a full-blown drum machine plugin. I'm calling it a plugin because I mainly buy these things for mobile devices, but you can get this as well for Mac and PC. There is a demo version too. First time you open it up, it gives you the opportunity to download the 1.5 gigabyte factory bank that I recommend to be able to jump into the fun straight away. It contains very good loops. You can use them in your own productions, of course, but it would be a huge hit and miss without the ability to load your own samples. So let's do that now. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a quick look at Loop Mix. When we open the app, we are presented with this init patch. And if I click on the name of the patch, I can fire up the browser. This is where I can find the factory bank. And this is where I can browse for samples to build up my own kit. So if I go to presets and packs, these are the pre-installed ones. 
I was talking about. That's the 1.5 gig pack you can download. You can preview these kits and you can favorite them, you can expand them to see the individual samples inside via pressing them and holding. And on the right hand side you can see six slots and I can basically build up my own stuff from here. I can preview them, I can randomize the sample if it's loaded, if not, I can press the plus sign and it brings up the files app where I can browse for samples. I can clear the samples too and that's it. If I go to favorites, this is where I have previously chosen two of the kits, or actually three, because uh, I have favorited the init one as well. It's easier to find it, because if you look at this one, it's a bit troublesome to scroll down there sometimes. So just press favorite, and it's there. Let me just double click on this one to show you the main layout. If you just go through this quickly, from top to bottom, at the top, you can see the tempo, and if you click and drag up and down, you can set it up. Or if you double tap it, you can manually add a value, and it's there. You can load and save these sequences or kits or whatever, because, you know, it saves whatever steps you set up with all their settings as well. There are nice and handy undo and redo buttons. And you can go to MIDI. This is everything you can MIDI map. I think if I go back and press mixer, yeah, you can MIDI map these things as well. Setting, settings panel, this is basically all the functions you can MIDI map, you can turn on and off Ableton Link, which is a lovely feature nowadays. Having all different gear synchronized all up, including your iOS devices, it's really nice. Okay, there are two playback options. One of them is selected by default. The other one, if you select the keyboard, is when we can play back these stems via key via the keyboard and there are different options here basically this is spread all over four octaves so c1 and the octave starting with c1 is for the stems themselves the original samples the second octave is to play back the arrangement per track and octave 3 and 4 are basically where you store your patterns. You can store 24 patterns. If I press and hold on C3, this is it. If I make some changes, I can press another key and I can jump back and forth these two. Okay, next to it you can go to the mixer page where you set your levels, you can reset it, you can mute and solo here as well. And lock is a really nice feature. You can lock steps in the sequencer one by one. So whatever you do, whatever you randomize, whatever you mango on the fly it won't affect those steps if basically the changes won't affect them of course you can reverse a step and then lock it and then if you randomize the reverse function it won't affect that particular step anymore 
there are three main options for randomization. The one of them, the first one basically, is selected by default. That's the normal randomization. The second one is kind of a remix thing. So if I press the big button, as you can see, many things change. But if I press the remix button, there are some subtle changes. So you can make slight variations to your pattern. And if you press the third one, the Thunderbolt button, if you press and hold it, it randomizes your arrangement. If you let it go, it goes back to the previous state. That's really nice. The next two buttons are really useful as well. Um, the first one is disintegration, I think it's called. Basically, if you set it up to a certain bar amount, this is set to four now. So in four bars, it will take away steps gradually. You're going to see less and less active steps. I can, of course, press undo and go back where I was. The next one is infinite. It's really nice because it generates, um, basically, it constantly evolves the pattern. So if I set it to two, every other pattern will start but basically it will change in two bars if i set it to four bars then the arrangement will change in four bars let's see this one so basically you know the waveforms are changing now because there are long samples here but if we get to bar four then it will change the whole thing it will randomize it differently. Export. This is where you can export individual stems via audio and MIDI, or you can export the whole thing, all six slots. If you are using the standalone desktop version, it can come really handy when you just want to drag and drop stuff for example, to Ableton Live or whichever. This one supports many, many doors. And if you are on iOS, you can send it to different apps. Okay, there are different tabs here. Sequencer, Rearrange, Reverse, Density, Volume and Pitch. All of them have three buttons in common. The first one, those three steps or those small squares, basically that's the randomize button per element or per function. The second one is reset, so it goes back to normal. And I can activate and deactivate these for the global randomization. So if I press this one and density is pressed as well, if I press random, these two functions will be randomized. Yeah, and there is a global reset button on the right hand side. This will clear everything. All right, so we can see these four five waveforms grayed out. And when we press play, they will change according to their length. I can do something really neat here. If I want to use just a certain segment of a long sample, I can press the trim button. Now it's set to all, so I'm gonna choose which one. Let's see which one changes. Yeah, so number five is fine. I press trim and 
with trim turned on, after 16 steps, that particular track won't change. So it always plays back those 16 steps of that sample I have logged this slot into. There are some common functions as well per track. I can change the pitch, I can change the offset, so I can move these samples to the left or to the right. I can freeze or trim these, so any given 16 steps will be held in place. And I can change their individual tempo as well. Just above that, the gray section, it's for the whole arrangement. I can set the speed of the whole thing. I can change it from mono to poly because by default I can only activate one step. So it's one, one note polyphonic at the same time. If I press poly, of course I can use many, many elements parallel. Subtle, normal and complex is basically the amount the parameters get randomized. And anchor is the master track I can select. So if I select number one and I only want to make subtle changes, the first one will be more or less the same. And it gets randomized the least. Okay, so these are the functions. In a nutshell, I can lock the tracks as well. I can clear them as well, but you know, I can just press undo and everything goes back to normal. I think this is more or less everything. Oh, actually I haven't told you about the, the different tabs. So sequencer is when you add on the steps, when you activate and deactivate, deactivate them. Rearrange is when you move them around. So if I press slice two on track one, I can copy it over to another step. Of course, I can randomize this and so on. Reverse, I can select steps or slices to be reversed. Density is when I want to repeat stuff in place. Yeah, this is the effect I have mentioned in the introduction. If you know, if you're familiar with Break Tweaker, that's a plugin made especially for these type of things some glitch effect you can put on each and every individual step. Volume, you can set the volume for every step and pitch says the pitch. You can tune your steps. All right. So this is it. Basically every function has its own parameters and you can change these according to the function. So now all is left is to have some fun.